allegro. It's a jig, that means it's a dance. So it has to be lively and have the feeling of a spirited dance. is to use singing and playing at the same time and if you've never done this before you might want to watch my video tutorial on singing and playing at the same time which is also on my website in the teaching section and this is a great way to get you to open up your sound get the sound warm to place your embouchure properly and to teach you not to use more air than you need to so just play everything slowly using singing and playing <laughs> And you'll be surprised how it helps your sound when you go back to playing the regular way. And also, make sure you practice this movement also with a metronome. It's very important that your rhythm be precise and accurate. Now obviously, the trickiest part of this fast movement is the articulation. Those 16th notes are really fast when you're playing this at 112. So first of all, don't start out your practicing trying to play it at full tempo, at 112. That's something to work up to. And if you don't get it all the way to that tempo on the day of the audition, that's okay. It's better to play it a little bit slower at a tempo that you can play cleanly than to try to play it at the tempo that's marked and make a disaster out of it. So find the tempo where you are comfortable and go in and play a convincing performance at that tempo. Now for the double tonguing, first of all I recommend that you go and watch my double tonguing videos that I've already made to just improve your basic double tonguing technique. And yes, these do need to be double tongued, not single tongued. So you can find my articulation videos by going to my website which is www.realfluteproject.com then go to my teaching and click on articulation. So assuming that you've been doing your articulation exercises and practicing your double tonguing, now you need to apply that to this excerpt. And in measure two of the jig, we have our first 16th note passage. And it's short, but it flies by quickly. And the way you say this passage, the first two notes are slurred. So I like to say in my mouth, ti-ya for those first two notes, going from the E to the D sharp. Ti-ya and then you start your double tongue pattern. Tia teka teka ta. Tia teka teka ta. Now keep the double tongue motion really, really, really small. It's just tika 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 ta. Tika 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 ta. It's not ta ka tika ta ka ta. You'll never make it in tempo if you try to make the gesture large like that. Tia tika tika ta. The other thing is don't peck the notes. And what I mean by that is peck 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 with your head like a chicken. It's not going to help your articulation. In fact, it's going to make it worse. So keep your body very still. Don't articulate with your head or your neck. It all happens inside your body. Tia tika tika ta. Now, the cool thing about a passage like this is you can practice it when you don't even have your flute. You can practice it when you're waiting for the school bus, when you're doing your chores. You can practice it when you're walking down the hallway at school. Your friends might tease you, but just tell them it's for all state. So, what you do is you just walk around saying tia tika tika ta, tia tika tika ta, tia tika tika ta, tia tika ta, and then in the next line you have tia tika ta, tia tika ta, tia tika ta, tia tika ta. Anytime I have those slurred two notes, I say tia, and then I start the tika tika ta. The other thing is don't blow a ton of air through the flute when you're trying to play those very fast passages. Pull back a little, let the sound just resonate inside your body for those. You don't need very much air to get those to speak. Just let the sound happen naturally. It's not. If you overdo it, you're going to make it harder. 
tea at Ticketet. Very small amount of air. Stand still and just let the gentle tongue take over there. Now another thing to watch out for in this is make sure you check all your accidentals and carry them through the measure. This piece is deliberately written so there are a lot of unexpected pitches that your ear doesn't necessarily anticipate. So you have to be careful. Make sure that in measure 14, in the last beat, that you get a B flat. Make sure that in measure 18, that and the second beat, that you have a C sharp carrying through the measure. Good luck on your auditions. Let me know how it goes. I'm hoping that this year's All-State Band will be the best ever. Want to get the extra edge on your audition? Here's a hint. Make sure your flute is in good working condition before your audition. There's nothing worse than practicing hard and not playing your best because your flute has a leak or a mechanical problem. So if you think your flute needs repair, I suggest you take it to or mail it to my friend Miles Davis at Miles Ahead Music in Louisville, Kentucky. He always does a great job on the instruments I send him and he'll take care of yours too. And while you're in his shop, you can have fun trying out the many high quality new and used flutes he has in stock. Be sure to check out his fully overhauled used Sankyo flute. I played it recently and it's a beautiful instrument. And tell him Nina sent you.